There we go. Hi, everybody. I think we're going to get started now. So just want to say first and foremost, welcome. So my name is Eric Bone, and I'm here with Ian Morse and Heather Davidson of Altus Assessments. We're absolutely thrilled to be discussing with you the logistics of Casper, how it works, what you can expect during the test, and how best to prepare, of course. So to give you a brief introduction into who we are, Ian and I connect to three different groups while we help facilitate Casper. You may connect with Ian as part of our applicant support team. I connect primarily with admissions teams across Canada, and Heather is well-versed in the research and validity behind Casper as a selection tool. So all of the information that we're covering today can be found on our website, takecasper.com, but this webinar will hopefully answer all of your questions about Casper and package most of the important bits into one place for you. Our goal for the webinar is for you, as a Casper applicant, to come out feeling self-assured for the upcoming admission cycle with an understanding of Casper and its process. Most importantly, we want you to have a positive testing experience. Perfect. So this webinar is a presentation for current and prospective Casper applicants. Specifically, Ian, Heather, and I will be talking about the Canadian Professional Health Sciences Casper test for programs like medicine, occupational and physical therapy, dentistry, graduate nursing, and a handful of others as well. We won't take the full hour, and we'll be diving deepest into preparing for Casper as the last topic we cover in today's session. I want to reiterate that all the information we're going to be sharing today is available on the Take Casper website, but today's webinar is a way to provide applicants like yourself easy access to the most up-to-date information about the Casper test. We invite you to ask questions, of course, via the QA feature, not the chat feature, um, and you can do so throughout the session. Just please note that we will not be responding to all questions live. We'll be posting the answers to those questions in the days following the webinar, along with a recording of today's session. We do have members of our team monitoring incoming questions as you ask them, and we'll start getting those answers back to you ASAP. Last but not least, we'd love to learn from you. So along with any specific questions you may have, uh, please provide us with any feedback about anything we may not be communicating well or something you couldn't find on our website. With that, I'm gonna take a moment to turn off my webcam so we can focus just on the presentation. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Ian as well. He's gonna walk you through today's topics. Awesome, thanks Eric. Uh, so today in the Casper webinar, uh, we're going to be touching on a few things. Uh, most importantly, why programs have chosen to use Casper and which ones have made it a test requirement, the logistics of Casper and what to expect when you're taking the test, how Casper is rated, the impact of Casper, and most importantly, how to prepare for Casper. Uh, now I'm going to turn it over to Heather. She's going to talk a little bit about admissions requirements, where Casper fits in, and why programs have chosen to use Casper. Perfect. Thanks, Dan. Uh, we don't have too much time today, so I'm just going to dive straight into why programs, like the ones you're applying to, have decided to use Casper. So professional health science programs want to select the students who are not only strong academically, but also have the personal and professional characteristics necessary to succeed in the field that they've chosen. This means selecting students that have excellent communication, problem-solving skills, empathy and motivation, as well as good grades. Academic metrics like the GRE or the MCAT only tell programs about one side of an applicant. These measures don't capture the qualities that predict professionalism issues, which make up the majority of patient complaints in practice. And many programs want a more holistic view of who their applicants are beyond their grades. Traditionally, programs have used tools like personal statements or essays, reference letters, and interviews to assess for these characteristics. But these measures aren't perfect. These screening measures do not predict for future performance in people skills, they contribute to a lack of diversity and access, and they don't usually authentically or accurately represent who you are. Research has shown that reference letters and personal statements have little to no predictive value or reliability to tease apart the good from the bad applicants. They often contain buzzwords from program websites, and eventually they all tend to sound the same to the people from your programs who are reading them. They also tend to advantage students with connections and knowledge of the healthcare system. So for example, people with family members who work in healthcare as doctors or nurses. Uh, questions asked in these non-cognitive measures tend to be about describing your behavior. They often start with, tell me about a time when you did something, uh, but these also make the answers Googleable, and it means that applicants often try to tell admissions committees what they think they wanna hear rather than giving a picture of their true self. 
Admissions committees want to know who you are, and this doesn't usually come through with personal statements and reference letters where everyone tends to write the same thing. Situational judgment tests like Casper, on the other hand, have been shown to predict for future performance, unlike personal statements and reference letters. Because they don't require any job-specific knowledge and can be taken from anywhere, they help to widen access and improve diversity in healthcare programs. In introducing a tool like Casper, programs are able to understand their applicants beyond just book smarts. They're able to really dig into providing applicants with a platform to demonstrate their strengths in the competency areas outside of science and knowledge. This can be particularly important for the applicants who just meet the cognitive cutoffs. They can use Casper to boost their chances of securing an interview spot and sometimes even acceptance into the program. Casper is a form of situational judgment test or SJT, a type of test commonly used in workplace hiring where you're presented with a scenario and asked how you would act. And it's specifically designed to help select the best candidates for professional health science programs. The situations you are presented uh, are presented with videos uh, for higher fidelity. And this means that you're more immersed in the scenario than you would be if you just read a description of it on paper. The test is online and you can take it from your personal computer, removing the need to travel to a testing center. This makes the test lower cost uh, and gives wider access for all applicants. Casper scenarios are not based on specific healthcare workplace situations, concentrating instead on general people skills rather than procedural knowledge. So the test does not disadvantage applicants who haven't had a chance yet to work in a healthcare setting. The test asks you how you would respond to the situations using constructed response, in other words, an open response type format, rather than asking you to choose the best response from a list of options in a multiple choice question. Why you chose what to do is more important than what you chose to do, and there are no right or wrong answers. This helps us to really tease apart differences between applicants, unlike multiple choice tests where everyone's scores tend to pile up at the high end of the scale. Casper is designed to assess for 10 competencies valued by professional health sciences programs. Collaboration, motivation, communication, problem solving, empathy, professionalism, equity, resilience, ethics, and self-awareness. The content of each test instance is unique, but the 12 scenarios in each test are carefully selected to ensure that each of these constructs is captured. Perfect. I'm going to jump back in. This is Eric here. Um, so I just want to share with you a little bit more about the programs we're requiring Casper. Um, so currently over 60 programs in Canada and 200 worldwide require Casper for the 2019-2020 admission cycle. In Canada, the majority lie in occupational therapy, physical therapy, medicine, and undergraduate nursing. More are always coming on board. And for a complete and updated list, you can visit takecasper.com and browse the test dates and times. So I want to take a brief moment just to share with you where Casper can fit into the admissions process. Um, before I, I share this, I do want to mention that every program is going to be using Casper in a unique way. Um, so what you see here may not be how your score is factored into a particular program, but this is very commonly what we see. So with most programs, after you decide to apply, your Casper score is required to be submitted along with your GPA and standardized tests and maybe personal statements, reference letters and the like to help determine which applicants will go on to the next stage of the admissions process. And that's what you see here. So after the initial application, your Casper score is submitted alongside some of those items. The goal here is to have Casper factored in, factored in as a more holistic review, providing additional info on the applicant and who they are. So let's talk a little bit more about the logistics of Casper. So what will happen is a program will adopt Casper for their admissions process, uh, but what they'll actually actually be doing is directing you to takecasper.com. Um, and that's us, that's Altus Assessments, and we're going to be doing a number of things. Um, we run the entire test, so we verify applicant accounts, set the test dates you can schedule, provide testing accommodations, administer and score the Casper test, all through the account you'll create on takecasper.com. Regarding accommodations themselves, if you need any sort of accommodation, so a scribe, extra time, closed captioning, reach out to us at support at takecasper.com. I'm going to say that email again, support at takecasper.com, because you can use it for a number of inquiries. You can also use the chat bubble on your Casper account, via the, or you can reach us via the contact us page. 
you must submit your accommodations request form, which is found in the accommodation sections of our FAQ on the website. And we ask that you do that at least three weeks prior to your desired test date. Now, as an applicant, you'll be required to register for a CASPER account, schedule your own test and pay your test fee. So we know how expensive the application process can be. Applicants are asked to pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars on test fees, prep courses, application fees, travel fees. So we've done our best to make the CASPER test as accessible as possible without creating a bigger financial burden. So for the Canadian Professional Health Sciences test, the cost is a $40 base fee plus $10 per program to send your score to or distribute your score to. If you're applying for any sort of postgraduate medical education or residency training such as CARMS, the test is $90. And of course, you take the test on your computer with a webcam available as well as audio. So when can I take CASPER and who requires it? So what you'll be doing is you'll be going to the Take CASPER website. Um, and I think there's a slide that's missing right now, but what'll happen is you'll see a date and time tab at the top left and if you follow that down, you'll be prompted to a page with information on the, the items that you'll need in terms of starting your account. So government, uh, government issued photo ID, um, you'll want a valid email address. Um, you'll need as well a working webcam and a microphone that works as well. But at the bottom of that page, you're gonna see a browse test dates and times button and you'll wanna follow that. Now, once you click on that button, you'll want to select the country in which the programs you're applying to reside in. So for most of you, that's going to be Canada, um, though it's very likely that some amongst you will be applying in the United States as well. Um, please note that if you are applying to both Canadian and U.S. programs, you'll be required to write CASPER for our, our American Professional Health Sciences cohort. In terms of Canada, the next step is to select the language um, that you'll be taking CASPER in. Um, so we offer an English and French language test. Uh, so for most of you in this webinar today, it may be English. Uh, please note as well that we will actually be running a French language webinar a little bit later in the season to speak about the programs that require CASPER in French or are bilingual. Next up, select the programs you're applying to. So that's the discipline. So maybe it's medicine, optometry, pharmacy, audiology. And at that point, you'll see the name of the test that you'll want to be taking. In this case, it's the Canadian Professional Health Sciences Test CASPER 10201. You'll see that in that orange bubble below. And then last but not least, you'll want to select the schools that you're applying to. I think we're missing another slide. We're just going to head on back. There we go. All right. So once you take that and once you follow that all the way down, you'll see the last possible test date available for all of your selected schools. Really, really handy to make sure you know what the last possible test is that satisfies all the requirements. Now, you'll see a table with all the information on all the schools that you've selected appear below that. So right here we have University of Ottawa's undergraduate medicine, the school and program are available, the specific notes to the program, the admission cycle, or in 2019, 2020, and the schools you're, you're applying to will be in that admission cycle. Following that, you'll see the test dates that are available to that program. So definitely take note of that column. We'll skip quickly to the ID requirements. So if a school requires you to submit some identifier information, such as an OMSAS ID or an OUAC ID, um, that will be listed there. Now, this is an item that programs will use just to help match your application to your CASPER score. Last but not least, that distribution deadline. Take note of that date as well. What that is, is the last date that you can send your score to a program. So even if you have a score already, um, you can select them later on in the cycle and send that score over. However, it's got to be before that date listed there. So definitely make sure you know the distribution deadline for every school that you're applying to. So a full list of schools participating in CASPER and available test dates can also be found in your CASPER account when reserving a test. So head to that website, account.takecasper.com to create your account. You'll again need photo ID, working webcam, valid email, as well as a working microphone in order to take and register for the test. So just as you do in browsing test dates and times, you'll want to select the country in which the programs you're applying to reside in. 
the programs you're applying to, and the schools you're applying to. You'll be prompted for payment once you select all the schools and enter any identifier information that they require. I'll also take a moment to point out something that Ian will talk to you in a lot more length later on. Uh, there is the sample test or the system requirements check at the bottom of this page as well. And that is one of the most valuable things that you can use as a resource to prepare for CASPER as it will really familiarize you with the format of the test. Great, so let's talk a little bit more about how CASPER works. So CASPER is an online video-based situational judgment test that screens for people skills like those CASPER constructs that Heather mentioned earlier. So you take the test on your own from a personal computer or laptop that has a working webcam and audio. This is a strict requirement of CASPER because we have sophisticated proctoring technology. That some, some is detectable, some isn't. And we use that to monitor applicants as they take the test. There are 12 scenarios or 12 sections. Scenarios are everyday situations that everybody can relate to. They don't require specific knowledge of the program or profession you're applying to. We don't want to bias or advantage anyone. Of those 12 scenarios, eight will be video-based and four will be text-based. Following the scenario, you'll be asked three open-ended questions that relate to the scenario, and you'll have five minutes to respond to all three questions. After six sections, there's an optional 15-minute break. At this time, you're able to get up, stretch your legs, use the washroom, have a snack, whatever you need to be comfortable in and exhale a little bit. You don't have to be in view of your testing webcam for this 15 minute period. You also don't have to take the break if you don't want to. If you want to continue with the remaining six sessions, you can absolutely do, absolutely do so right away. So just quickly, I'd like to show you a screenshot of what the video scenario might look like. So this video will play automatically. You don't have the ability to pause, replay, or rewind the video, so it's very important to be focused. You might want to have headphones in, and you definitely want to be paying attention to the full scenario. You can absolutely take notes during your test about the details of the scenario. However, you're not allowed to bring in pre-written notes. Remember, you have five minutes to respond to the three questions, so if you are taking notes, you want to budget enough time to type your replies out. Once the video is finished, you'll automatically be directed to the response page. That looks like this. You can see all three questions at once, so take some time to read them and plan your responses accordingly. There are no right or wrong answers to these questions. They're fully open-ended, so reply however you see fit and demonstrate how you'd respond to the previously presented scenario, as well as why you'd respond in that way. The point here is to show your unique perspective. For example, Ian and I may choose to take the same action on a given scenario, but why we take that action may be drastically different. So definitely explain your motivation. Don't forget about that countdown clock at the bottom of the page either. You'll have five minutes again to respond to all three questions. If you finish before the five minutes are complete, you can press the submit button to proceed to the next scenario. If you decide to take the full five minutes, most applicants do, you'll be automatically directed to the next scenario and your responses will also be automatically saved. Now, don't worry if you misspell a word or two or if you don't finish a sentence. Our raters are trained to not have that factor in when scoring. Also, last but not least, you see at the bottom right of your screen, there's an orange chat bubble. If at any point during your test you experience technical issues, reach out to our support agents. They're there and they'll help you out. So let's chat a little bit more about how Casper is rated and distributed. So once you've completed all 12 sections of the CASPER test, your responses will be submitted to our CASPER raters to be scored. So we have many raters from all over Canada with different backgrounds and life experiences. Essentially, we want to represent the patient population in our rater pool, and they're also not employees of Altus. Every response a rater sees is totally anonymized to avoid cultural, racial, and gender biases common with other assessment tools. They don't know how you did in terms of your GPA or on standardized tests. They don't know if you received any accommodations. They're only rating you based on the type response that you've submitted for a given scenario. We also train our raters very rigorously. So some important things to note included in that training, they're trained to disregard spelling. They're trained to disregard English profic proficiency level, the length of your response or cut off or incomplete sentences. They know that you're gonna be under strict time constraints. So none of these factors should be considered when assigning a score. 
it's very common for them to see typos or cut off sentences. So I really want to make sure you're not worrying about that. Focus on the content. That's what the raters are focusing on as well and how your response relates to the Casper constructs. Again, we're driving this home just because an applicant has, just because you might've written a significant amount of text, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's good, but the opposite is true too. Just because you haven't written a lot doesn't mean that that response is poor. So regarding Casper's rating, Casper is rated using 12 independent raters who are scoring your Casper responses. So that means your Casper score is a result of 12 unique individual impressions. There's one rater per scenario and no rater will see more than one response from any given applicant. Raters, instead of rating your test the whole way through from sections one to 12, are focusing on one particular section for multiple different Casper applicants. So maybe a rater sees a series of responses just from scenario three. Rating applicant responses from the same scenario over and over allows the rater to give a score for your response that's relative to your peers. This is important because it allows programs you're applying to you to have a sense of how you're doing relative to those peers and the entire applicant pool. Prior to rating applicant responses, raters are assigned to a particular scenario and provided with relevant instructions, background knowledge, theory, as well as some guiding questions about the scenario and what constructs the scenario is probing for. So the score itself that you're given is based on a Likert type scale. You'll receive a number from one to nine, one being poor and nine being excellent, for each of the 12 scenarios. From here, every applicant will get a raw score based on the 12 unique scores from 12 raters, which is then converted into a single Z score for your programs to use to see how an applicant is performing relative to the rest of the applicant pool. Now, when does your score get distributed? So when does it get sent to those programs? So it's three weeks following your CASPER test. Three week turnaround time, however, we've actively been working to deliver a two week turnaround, we'll guarantee three weeks. So who receives your score? So again, it's those schools that you selected for distribution when reserving your test. You can add schools to your distribution list after you've taken Casper, so long as that distribution deadline, remember it's on that chart that you saw before, as long as that's not passed, you're still good. Now, we do not release scores to applicants. And we get asked why very commonly. So currently we don't distribute results to applicants because every program uses Casper in a different way. Some use it formulaically, some as a cutoff, and it's totally up to the program to determine how Casper is factored in. So what this means that is that the same Casper score may be competitive for one program, but less so for another. The influence of the score also depends on the competitiveness of the applicant pool for each program. Again, each program has the independence to use and interpret Casper in whichever way they see fit, just like they do when factoring GPA and standardized test scores. The difference right now between GPA and Casper is that programs make public knowledge about how GPA and other cognitive measures factor into their admissions decisions. They've not yet done the same for Casper. At the moment, even if we did release your Casper score, it would not be clear how you should interpret or how you should interpret that in terms of your application. Finally, the Casper score is total numeric number that's not broken down by areas or topics. So you're not going to get a score per construct, for example. It's one complete number. Therefore, sharing this information with applicants won't provide any insights. Okay, so thank you for listening to me for a little while. <laughs> I, went there. I know we covered a lot just now. Um, what I want to do now, though, is turn it over back to Heather. Um, I'm sure she's going to cover a few things I might have missed. Uh, but she's also going to share with you a little bit more about what we've learned about Casper after screening over 200,000 applicants. Uh, thanks, Eric. Uh, so Heather here again, uh, and I'm here to talk a little bit about the impact of Casper on healthcare programs. So at Altus Assessments, we firmly believe that it's not enough for a test just to measure the constructs it's intended to measure. It also needs to give every student an equal opportunity to succeed, regardless of their background. While no test is going to be perfect, we're committed to reducing the negative unintended consequences of testing, and so we conduct continuous quality assurance on the broader impact of Casper. Okay. By giving programs information about you beyond your grades, Casper aims to help widen access to groups that are traditionally underrepresented in medicine and healthcare, as there is now a need more than ever to diversify the healthcare profession to meet the needs of an ever-changing population. We conduct continuous research and quality improvement work to ensure that Casper is as fair as possible to all applicants and not adding an additional hurdle for underrepresented groups. 
Here, we touch upon a research study conducted with New York Medical College in the States. I won't dive too deep into the specifics of the study. We know there's a lot of information being thrown at you guys today. But overall, we have found that compared to traditional admissions tools such as GPA and standardized tests like the MCAT or the GRE, CASPER is a more equitable screening tool. We've also looked at the impact of other variables and preparation strategies on CASPER performance. Again, our goal is to produce an assessment that isn't strongly influenced by testing prep, so differences in scores are due to real differences in applicants' skills relative to the profession of their choice rather than their test-taking abilities. We know of no research demonstrating that third-party test prep has any significant advantage over doing a full-length practice test like the one that we have available on our website, which Ian will speak to in a moment. In one study we conducted, we found that applicants who had access to the specific CASPER scenarios in their test in advance actually performed worse than applicants seeing those scenarios for the first time. Uh, applicants who saw the scenarios in advance tended to focus too much on memorizing answers that they thought programs would want to hear and weren't able to give a response that was authentic to what they would actually do. We've also found that CASPER scores are not influenced by spelling and grammar, reading level over grade seven, English proficiency, or the number of CASPER tests you've taken. All that being said, there are some ways that you can prepare yourself better for the CASPER test format so that on the day of your test, you're comfortable and confident in your new ability to show us the best that you have to offer. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Ian, who's going to speak about how you should prepare for your CASPER test. Thanks, Heather. Ian here, hope you guys didn't forget about me. Um, now we're gonna talk about some of the really important stuff how you can prepare to take your CASPER test. Uh, all right, like Heather touched on, we're gonna talk about some test preparation. So as CASPER has become more widely used, we've seen an increase in the number of test prep companies. So one thing I just wanna clear up is we, Altus Assessments, are not affiliated with any test prep company. And because we know how expensive the application process is, uh, we offer all the materials you need to prepare for CASPER for free. You can access this by going to our website at takecasper.com and we have a, a section there that's called test prep. Another, you can also access uh, your full 12 section sample test by checking out, uh, by clicking on your system requirements check. All right, I'm gonna talk about uh, some ways to start your test worry-free, right? We know that taking a test in general is a stressful experience. So we have some tips to, make a, uh, to help you make your testing experience as smooth as possible. One, we really encourage applicants to reserve your CASPER test at least three days in advance. Access to, computer, to a computer with a webcam and microphone, as well as high-speed internet access. Now, when it comes to your webcam, if you have a computer that has more than one web camera, we would like you to use the webcam that points at you. And you can do this by going into your Chrome or Firefox settings. To ensure your computer can run the test, please complete the system requirements check, which is available on your CASPER account. I would encourage you to do this when you sign up for the test, as well as the day of the test. You, I can't stress this enough, you cannot run that system requirements check enough. Uh, restart your computer the day of, just in case there's any, there's any pending updates in the background that you might not be aware of. And if you have any issues or any questions, please contact uh, us at Applicant Support. You can do that by using the live chat button located in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, as well as sending an email to take Casper, uh, support at takecasper.com. Okay. Um, coming back to that 12 section uh, practice test, we really encourage applicants to familiarize themselves with the test format. This is gonna help reduce anxiety on test day and it allows, it allows you to get a feeling for how long five minutes really is when it comes to responding to scenario questions. The last thing you wanna do is have your first experience with a five minute time cap being the first time you take CASPER. We get a lot of feedback in regards to questions about why there is a five minute time limit and I want you guys to know that we hear you, we take your feedback very seriously and for that reason, I'm gonna to touch on a couple of reasons why the time limit is five minutes for responses. And the big one for us is authenticity. Right? We're looking for your authentic self in your responses. And research has shown that having longer than five minutes to respond, uh, people tend to censor their responses into more of what they think their programs are trying to hear as opposed to what they actually feel about the scenario, which is something that Heather touched on earlier. Uh, the test length. Right now, Casper sits between 16 and 90 minutes, uh, which is uh, vastly shorter if you're gonna look at the MCAT, which is about seven and a half hours long. So we're really trying to limit the amount of stress placed on applicants. And one other reason is if the response time gets longer, your CASPER test is also going to get longer. And one of the last reasons uh, is cost. 
we actually have a full team on hand to help you for every single Casper test uh, date, whether that's before the test, during the test, and after. The length of the test increases, so will the cost of actually taking Casper. All right, so when you're taking your test, I really suggest finding a quiet place to take the test alone. Uh, plan ahead if you know that your house might be, or where you're taking the test, I should say, is a little bit distracting, whether that's noisy roommates, noisy siblings, pets, that kind of thing. Uh, good options are if you can find a quiet place at home. Another great option is a library. And lastly, if you can find a nice quiet place to take it on campus, that's awesome as well. Like I mentioned before, please rerun the system requirements check. Uh, if you, in the intended test environment before testing. So if you're gonna take it out of the library, library, take your computer to the library and run the system requirements check before you're testing. Same thing for if you're taking it on campus and same thing for if you're taking it uh, at your home. I don't know if your Wi-Fi looks like, works like mine does, but there's certain points in the day where my Wi-Fi gets a little spotty. So if you know you're gonna be taking it at five o'clock on a Tuesday, maybe run the system requirements check at five o'clock on Monday. That way you get a vibe for exactly how your Wi-Fi might be behaving at that point in time. Uh, we also recommend headphones. If it's going to help you focus, that's amazing. Uh, some of the issues applicants have reported are with Bluetooth headphones, so we highly encourage applicants not to use the Bluetooth headphones. All right. Read all three questions, then plan your responses. So with any test, please read the questions carefully and then plan your response. After the video or written scenario is presented, you'll be asked to respond to three open-ended questions within a five-minute window. You will feel pressed for time but make sure to read all three questions and take a moment to reflect and plan your responses. The big thing about this is it's gonna allow you to avoid repeating yourself as you move from question to question or missing a question completely. We would really like you to consider all aspects of the dilemma presented to make sure you're covering the issue from as broad a perspective as possible. The one last thing I wanna stress, which is something that Heather and Eric touched on previously is, the raters don't see your responses from previous sections, so please do not refer to a past section when responding in your answer. So don't refer to us, uh, section four if you're responding in section five, because the rater will have no idea what you've written in the previous section. All right, use the full five minutes to respond. I highly encourage you to use the full five minutes. If you finish your response before the five minutes is up, that's awesome. It's a really good idea to go back, look over your answers, and see if there's more you can add specifically why you chose the stance you did. Raiders are looking for your motivations for taking a position rather than only the position itself. So it helps to explain your reasoning as completely as possible within the time given. We have found that applicants who use all five minutes in responding tended to score higher on Casper than students who moved on to the next section before their time was up. So if you run at a time or when you're responding, don't worry, you're actually on the right track. All right, don't panic if you don't finish your thought, right? If time does run out, don't panic. With a restricted amount of time to answer all three questions, it's common for time to run out while you're finishing your thought. You'll automatically be moved on to the next section and all of your responses will automatically save, so please don't panic. This happens to almost everyone. And raters are used to seeing unfinished responses. Raters are also explicitly trained to ignore spelling issues, so focus on the content and explaining yourself versus fixing grammar or typos. If you're disappointed in your response, don't worry. Take a deep breath, try your best on the next section, as like I said, each section is graded by a different rater who has no idea who you are or how you performed on a past section. Do not be concerned if you feel like your answers are particularly weak for one section, you have 11 other sections to reveal your true self. Use the seconds in between each section and the 15 minute break to collect your thoughts, calm your nerves, and reset your mind for the next section. All right, I'm gonna leave you guys with some test date tech tips, kind of reiterating some stuff I said before, but like I said, um, you, can't, you can't do this stough enough, right? So one, double check your Casper account information. This is really important when it comes to distributing your scores. The information in the IDs, whether that's your OMSAS ID, your application ID, whatever it might be on your Casper account has to be identical to that on your application. If there's any discrepancies, it's gonna get a little bit tricky for programs to match your score. Not a big deal is we can always go back and fix it, but I mean, if I was in your position, I would wanna make sure my score got there on time when it was supposed to. Um, again, perform the system requirements check. I've said this about 10 times, I'm say it 11 times, you please do the system requirements check, please. All right, another thing you can do is check to ensure you have a working webcam, a working microphone, and a high-speed internet connection. Like I said before, if your computer has multiple webcams, you want to use the one that's facing you. Now, how you can do that 
is by going into the settings of your internet browsers. Whether it's a Chrome or Firefox, the settings are in the upper right hand corner. On Chrome, it's three dots, and on Firefox, it's three lines. Go into there, go into your preferences, and you'll be able to select which web camera the web browser is accessing. It's not the Casper site that accesses your webcam, it's the actual browser that you're using, all right? Now, to follow up on browsers, only Firefox and Google Chrome, the latest versions, will work when taking Casper. Please don't use Safari, please don't use Edge, and if it still exists, please don't use Internet Explorer, all right? Disable the VPNs, firewalls, and plugins. Know the date and time of your Casper test. And now this is important. All Casper dates and times, or times I should say, are in EST or EDT, right? So please take into account the time change for where you live. If you're not in Eastern Standard Time, you need to make sure of the time of your Casper test. We try to make this as simple as possible. So if you go to your testing page, you'll actually see a live countdown timer. When this timer, and this is accurate for the time zone that you reside in. So when this timer hits zero, you're gonna see a start button. Click that button, start your test. Remember that refresh, the refresh button and live chat buttons are your friend. If you have any technical issues on Casper, your video is buffering slowly, you can't scroll down a page, before reaching out or panicking, I really encourage you to click refresh. Nine times out of 10, that's gonna fix your problem. If you do have a problem that can't be fixed by the refresh button, use that live chat. It's in the corner, right-hand corner of your screen. It's that little uh, orange circle. Reach out, you'll probably be put in touch with me or someone else in the applicant support team, and we're more than happy to troubleshoot the issues and we can help you make sure that you can complete your test in full to the best of your abilities. Now I'm going to hand it over to Eric for the last little bit. I hope you, I hope this has uh, been helpful for you guys. Awesome. Thanks, Ian. Um, super valuable stuff. Uh, but I just wanted to jump back in quickly and summarize what we chatted about today. Um, so I hope by now you know that Casper helps to give a more holistic picture of you. Uh, Casper increases diversity and access and it's evidence-based. But after Ian was just chatting, you now know how to prepare and maximize your success with Casper. I'm gonna reiterate this webinar and QA will be posted. Um, I know that some of the questions have already started pouring in. Uh, we're gonna work hard to get those answers back to you as soon as we possibly can. Uh, but just because this webinar is wrapping up, uh, don't let that be the end of your questions if you have any. So please reach us at support at takecasper.com. You can use that chat bubble to reach us as well. Uh, but in summary as well, I wanna say thank you very much for joining us today. On behalf of the crew at Altus, um, on behalf of Ian, Heather and I, I wanna say thank you for joining us over your lunch hour. Good luck this upcoming admission season, and in particular, good luck on your Casper test. Thanks so much. <laughs>